The Commanders just traded away Chase Young and Montez Sweat, so that's exactly what we're going to do here in this rebuild as we rebuild the Washington Commanders. I don't think we're going to have any problem getting some of these trades accepted. Chase Young for a third. That goes straight through. Improved team. Well, that's not exactly what we're doing. Now, I think this will go through, but I'm not actually positive. Montez Sweat for a second. Okay, that goes straight through as well. The Bears are gung-ho to get that done. Of course they are. Bit of a weird trade for them because if you don't end up re-signing Montez Sweat, and I get that they can franchise tag him. You're not really worried about just one year, but are you really paying for half a season of a very bad 2023? And then I guess you're franchise tagging him in 2024 if he doesn't re-sign. All that for number 33 in the draft if the Bears end up at number one or, you know, top 36 pick at the very least, right? We expect the Bears to continue to be pretty bad. We'll see what ends up happening. They've made a couple of questionable trades at the deadline. Chase Claypool last year, also for a second round pick at the very, very, very top of the second round. So at the top of the second round last year, it was actually a top 32 pick because the Dolphins had their first round pick uh, taken away. So the Bears are, they're doing some interesting things there in Chicago with Ryan Poles. We'll see if he ends up staying the GM for uh, the foreseeable future or not. But this is the team. Ricky Stromberg actually played center at Arkansas. But I guess we could keep him and start him at right guard. Does have hidden, which will be star development. Nick Gates, of course, starting at center for right now. The Giants legend. Now, I thought Sam Cosme was starting at right guard in real life. And maybe he is. But we definitely need to move one of those positions. The offensive line is a mess. I'm probably not done making trades. Probably will end up trading Charles Leno. I obviously want to keep Scary Terry. He is such a monster. Jahan Dotson has potential. Curtis Samuel's a nice player, but Dotson probably will be receiver two for me. And then the big question mark is going to be, can we develop Sam Howell or do we look in the draft for a replacement? He's got a pretty big arm. I call him Baby Baker. You know, you kind of think these guys wouldn't have the biggest arms. They're smaller QBs, six foot or six one. And they've got pretty solid arms. They being Sam Howell and Baker Mayfield, of course. The accuracy and consistency ends up being the issue. And Sam Howell particularly just loves to hold on to the football. I know the offensive line does him no favors, but you got to get rid of the ball. He's taking so many sacks. Some of that is the offensive line's fault. Some of that is also his fault. On defense, wow, it looks like we have a hole on the edge. Yes, of course. James Smith-Williams is our highest rated edge rusher right now. That needs to change. Other than that, I do like some of what's on this defense. I love the interior. Jonathan Allen is incredible. Deron Payne's really nice. I like the safeties. I like the corners for the most part. Emmanuel Forbes, we can try to develop. He's not been off to a hot start in real life at all. But um, you kind of knew what you were getting into when you drafted him. He's kind of like an all or nothing type corner at times where he plays for the pick six. Coverage down the field can be a bit of a problem. And this is one of the most strange looking pictures I've ever seen. I'm going to slide out of the way here. What's up with the neck and the shoulders? It looks like he's got a tiny little head. What's going on with that? I don't know. That looks insane. That looks completely insane. And I do really like Quan Martin here. Quan, Jertavius Quan Martin. Nickel corner. He's going to end up starting there for us. He's not really going to be a boundary guy. Could end up moving him back to safety if that becomes a need. Right now, it's not. I think the odd man out could be Benjamin St. Juiced. Kendall Fuller is really nice, but he is 28 years old. You wonder how much longer he's going to be around to develop, which is not long at all. He's going to start regressing in real life. His contract says that he's only under contract for one more year. That's probably a guy I should trade right now as well. Cam Curl also with an expiring contract, except we're going to look to re-sign him. Curtis Samuel, I'm probably going to try to trade. Cody Barton, might want to hold on to for a year or two. Antonio Gibson's here. Can't really imagine he has a ton of value. Well, the Bears want to do another trade. I can trade Kendall Fuller in exchange for Jalen Johnson, who's been, he's been one of the league's best corners this year. He's a really good player. I'm constantly hyping up Jalen Johnson after the past few years. He's a really, really underrated player. Really solid option for us as we basically upgrade. Yes, it's a short-term lower overall for also an expiring contract, except I'm going to extend him. That's the plan. I can pretty much guarantee that that's, what, that's what's going to happen, right? I 
do want to get rid of Benjamin St. Just. Because we really only need three good corners. We can draft another. It's very easy. But St. Just, he's 25 years old. That's fine. He's a decent overall. Should have decent value. Maybe I can package him with, you know, somebody like Curtis Samuel and good, uh, good value back for him. I just really wanted to get rid of uh, Fuller. That was the big deal for me. And we can't really get a lot. Joseph Osai, hook him, of course. That would be a huge trade for us. Need somebody on the edge. There's Sky Moore is there. Kobe Dean. Isaiah Simmons from the Giants. That's probably the smart thing to do. We'd also get a third in 2025. Could upgrade on the offensive line, though. Jonah Jackson would be a huge get. I think I actually might lean that way. The offensive line is so bad. Jonah Jackson's one of the best young guards in the game. We're going to go ahead and get him via trade. And that way... Ricky Stromberg can move back to center. We still have a, a decent guard option in Hookem, Sam Cosme, although we could end up moving him back to tackle. Uh, but this definitely makes our offensive line a lot better. And Nick Gates just doesn't have to factor into the, you know, the future plans. Jonah Jackson also has an expiring contract. That's maybe why we were able to trade for him. But we need to... We need to extend some of these guys. Jamison Crowder had a big game back in Washington, by the way. Kind of crazy. Trading Nick Gates, Cody Barton, and Antonio Gibson for a second round pick from the Bills. It's not going to be a very valuable second round pick. The Bills are just too good. But I wanted to just get Nick Gates out of the depth chart. We have Ted Larson as a backup. That's huge. Oh, huge. Not Ted. Tyler. What happened to Ted Larson? Ted Larson is out of the league. Tyler Larson... I don't know who this is. You know what? Shame on me. He's, he's started as many as 10 games in a year back in 2017 with the Panthers. This doesn't really seem familiar to me. Also, people have been asking what's been going on when I'm looking up recently. I have another monitor above me, so that's what's going on. It's easier on my neck, so I don't have to be looking side to side. And uh, that's basically what's going on with that. So linebacker is now atrocious. We have Jamin Davis. Outside of that, the highest rated linebacker is Giants legend David Mayo. Yeah, not great. We do have KJ Henry off the edge. He's a super old rookie, but somebody I actually quite liked as a mid-round prospect. Now, you got to remember some of these guys that go in the mid to late rounds. You can like them. They can be good players, but they're probably never going to be big impact players. You're talking about kind of situational guys. Like KJ Henry could end up being like a nice rotational player. And sometimes that's enough. We're at least going to pop in a training camp with you know, Sam Howell, Jahan Dotson, try to upgrade some of our younger players as Howell's jersey says Commanders on the back. But uh, usually these practice jerseys don't even have any names. But you know what? They got a rep for their their new team name. Get that branding accomplished or brand like branding, brand recognition. I don't know, some, some words. I think Brian Robinson Jr. is young enough and a high enough overall where if we focus, we can actually upgrade him and have him be our running back of the future. He's a nice player in real life, you know, power back, of course. I don't know if he's ever going to be a ton in the passing game. Like, yeah, they can keep targeting him, but I, I'm not sure if he's got, like, the route running ability to actually be, you know, a super impactful player. You know, not everyone's going to be a Christian McCaffrey, obviously, or anybody. Uh, but if you can just catch the ball in space and get a couple extra yards, you know, I don't see a reason why Brian Robinson can't be, like, a three-down threat. But, yeah, mainly just a power back. I wonder if he's going to end up being, like, the guy. Of course, in Madden, you know, it's tough to, to grade these running backs. Tough to slap them with it overall. Because how do you really do much other than just focus on production? And then that's how a guy like Alfred Morris becomes one of your highest rated running backs. And then he's out of the league in, like, four years. Or, like, Beanie Wells. I don't know. I hope you get what I'm saying. But, yeah, Brian Robinson's a nice player. We'll see if he ends up being like the long-term featured back in Washington or if something else happens. In this rebuild, I think I am going to try and focus on him. That's what I'm trying to say. I really do think this first training camp is going to be pretty important. You know, we're kind of trying to build that foundation of, of stars on this team going forward, and we need all the help we can get. There's only a couple of guys at each position, like linebacker is one, Jamin Davis. The DBs, we're going to have a little bit more. But the defensive line, it's just really about building up Deron Payne. Jonathan Allen's already there. We have no edge rushers to develop. At receiver, Scary Terry's already there. It's all about Jahan Dotson. At running back, it's just about Brian Robinson. Obviously, quarterback's only got one guy, potentially, in Sam Howell. So it's really, you know, one or two guys at each position group that we're actually able to upgrade 
And um, Jamin Davis is going to be pretty big. And it's an easy gold as well for Emmanuel Forbes. His development could be really big for us. It's just going to be a challenge to get him up because he's such a low overall. But he should be, what, 76 now after that upgrade? No dev trade upgrades for anybody, unfortunately. But you know what? It's just how it goes a lot of the time, unfortunately. But uh, we'll get some plus ones that could be pretty helpful over the course of this thing. And Jamison Crowder is going to help develop Jahan Dotson. What does he need? I mean, getting open is never a bad idea. And I think medium routes is going to be the way to go. We can develop short, we can develop deep, but medium feel, feels like a bit more of a toss of a coin because slot, we know it's going to develop short. Deep threat, we know it's going to develop deep route running. But you got to get a little bit lucky to get that medium upgrade. And what about training camp standout here? Be somebody I actually want to develop. Jamin Davis. Do we want the play wreck or the tackle? I'm going to take the play wreck and plus five play wreck. I don't think you could really go wrong there either way, but it's nice that we're actually being able to develop players I actually want to develop. Sometimes it's guys, once you've got the team, that you don't have any interest in. Not the case here, luckily enough. We already have some more upgrades prior to week one. I'm trying to make Brian Robinson Jr. a, a bit more well-rounded, but I think in the end, it's probably just going to end up being power back. But he's already so good in some of those categories that maybe I do keep trying to make him more well-rounded. I don't know. I'll go slot again on Emmanuel Forbes. That'll be a nice upgrade for him. That's kind of the way you want to upgrade man coverage. Just do slot. You always get man. Sometimes you get speed as well. But I also want to upgrade zone too. I want both of those to be 80+. plus. It's going to be a process. But Sam Howell has another upgrade. I will do improviser this time. As he improves to a 74 overall, he's still young enough where if he has a good season, there's something here. The accuracy is good. The throw power is good. The speed is good. It's just about getting, you know, throw under pressure into the 80s and general accuracy into those 90 ranges. And I don't really know if Jamin Davis is capable of getting two tackles for loss in the same game. Might be smarter just to put him on the edge to give him a more of an opportunity to do something. Still probably will not happen. I'm just going to make sure our scouts are in a good spot. You guys are pretty familiar with the team up to this point, as Bullocks is our number one quarterback. Now, for my fans <laughs> over the pond, across the whatever they call it, uh, Bollocks means balls. Uh, that's not quite what this is, but it's close. It's close. Do I want a 5'11 quarterback, though? We're a 6'6", 230 with a rocket arm that looks good in shorts. Josh Allen. Nicholas St. Louis is also a 5'11 quarterback. Or St. Louis. What is up with this QB class? A bunch of little shorties. And, I mean, the strengths of this class are positions I'm not really looking to upgrade. Wide receiver, QB, and corner. If there's a good enough QB, obviously I would go out and do it. But wide receiver and corner, we don't really need. Now, we could still consider taking those positions, but I'm just not sure it's the best use of funds. Receiver class looks like okay. We don't really know about any of these guys yet, but there's only one guy that's like a guaranteed round one guy. And then at corner, two, including a six foot four corner. I'm intrigued at the very least. A little tight end, right end action. So we have the scouts all the way set up now. And I know the strengths of the class, wide receiver, QB, corner, but I decided to do outside linebacker and offensive tackle because there are more outside linebackers that I'm actually interested in. Some of these guys at the top here. So with the tackles, like, yeah, it might not be a strength of the class, but there are, you know, quite a few that I'm a little bit interested in. So might as well. We do not really need wide receiver or corner like yes i do want an upgrade at at both of those positions probably but it's not like an overwhelmingly urgent need i want to try and develop these guys at least a little bit so we'll see what happens we lose 14 10 to the cardinals that's never a good sign oh my goodness and jamin davis i'm sure did not go out and get it done so i guess i'll see you next time at the midseason mark we'll re-sign some players like jalen johnson and Jonah Jackson, who we traded for. Team's already changed quite a lot. Okay, so Jalen Johnson actually does want to be back, as does Cam Curl. Jonah Jackson, 
Doesn't really. We do have Terrell Burgess as well. When did that happen? Jonah Jackson just wants money. That's pretty much what it comes down to. So we are going to give him money. Five-year deal. Up the offer. This really is not that expensive for Jonah Jackson. And he is back on a long-term deal. Jalen Johnson should be pretty easy. It's a little bit over 10 per year. And he values the historic championships of the Commanders. Well, good thing he's not a history buff, so we're going to bring him back pretty easily. No, they have won a few Super Bowls. It's just like so long ago that, I mean, who could even remember? Who could remember? Co oh, Commanders fans or whatever they were called before that. Cam Curl needs more time to think about it. No, there was a, I mean, Doug Williams, big time QB for Washington. Timmy Smith had a big Super Bowl and then was never heard from again. Terrell Burgess, I probably don't want. I probably just don't want almost anybody here. I want to hit the reset button a bit. Is Curtis Brooks already 25? Wow, okay. I mean, I remember him coming out of Cincinnati. He's a super good athlete. I thought maybe the Colts drafted him. But he is on our team now. We'll end up picking up the fifth-year option of Jamin Davis. Can probably do better overall-wise than Joey Sly. Pretty good kicker in real life. But we can probably do better overall-wise here in Madden. Curtis Brooks was drafted by the Colts. Didn't make the team. Went to the Titans last year, but was only off-season or practice squad. And then Commanders this year. So I don't know why Cam Curl rejected our last offer. I'm trying to give you financial stability forever. And he accepts this new deal. Gave him slightly more money. But again, I'm probably not interested in anybody else there. So it's just draft and off-season focused at this point. We have a really high draft pick courtesy of the Chicago Bears. That should be really nice for us. Traded some other players for picks as well. And no Chase Young, no Montez Sweat, no problem. We're three and seven doing just fine without them. And as for the draft here, you know, we do have a couple of these guys, like we know about them, but am I like interested enough in these quarterbacks to potentially draft them? Max Stevenson looks like he's got good accuracy. Should I use my focus points on quarterback or should I just entirely avoid the position this year? I'm really not sure how I want to go about this. Dalton Weaver from Auburn has a cannon and was he only 20 years old? You like never see that in Madden. I've actually complained about this before. I don't know if I've ever seen a 20 year old in Madden in the draft. I just don't think I ever have. I know that seems insane because it's not that uncommon, but I don't think I've ever seen that. Max Stevenson from Arizona is extremely accurate. I don't think I'm going to be interested in Justin Bullocks. Demario Rice looks good. I mean, this tight end Eric Cook from Clemson looks really good. I don't know. It, it'll be... Uh... Oh, and Jimmy Lockhart also looks insane at tight end. Are we drafting a tight end this year? We would end up going 5-12, and 12, dead last in the NFC East. Giants at 6-11. and 11. Very sad. But I'm not worried about the Giants right now. I'm rebuilding the Commanders. Sam Howell throws for 3,500 yards, 22 touchdowns to 16 picks. Rushing, Brian Robinson goes over 1,000, but fewer than four yards per carry, only six touchdowns. We only had 11 rushing touchdowns. Logan Thomas got a carry, probably on a screen or something. It just registered behind the line. Scary Terry does go over 1,000 yards receiving. John Dotson had seven touchdowns. But all in all, we were absolutely horrendous. Wow, no pressure. We had like slightly into the double digits for team sacks and almost no interceptions. Well, this is a decent amount, I guess, but uh, yeah, all in all, this team was just atrocious. KJ Henry did have 18 TFLs though, which is absurd. Lamar Jackson wins MVP as the Ravens win the Super Bowl. Chase Young ended up playing in the Super Bowl with the 49ers. But, you know, we have nothing positive to report other than that. And that's not even positive. We traded him away unfortunately. But uh, you know what? It's not about what happened in the past. It's about what can happen in the future. And that's hopefully team success. I don't know. I'm trying to look at any bright side here. There are not many. There really are not. But we had a lot of time to figure this out. Hopefully you're along for the ride with me. And hit the subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. You might think you're subscribed. Might be getting a lot of videos in the recommended. Sorry, I hit my mic. Don't worry about it. 
But hit that subscribe button for more professionalism like that. What a, what a channel this is. Uh, you'll like it, please. But, oh, oh, it's good. <laughs> no, it's, it, it exists. That's the review. Jamin Davis, fifth year option picked up. And yeah, don't have any interest in anybody else. And we will advance to free agency. How fun. Here in free agency, I think that Josh Allen is really the only target I'm super interested in. Of course, in free agency doing these rebuilds, I'm trying to marry early on as well. Like, you know, first or second year, I'm trying to marry the idea of a player being young enough, plus a high enough overall. And obviously money plays a factor as well. And there just aren't a ton of players I'm super interested in. But I think the perfect combo of age, and obviously you'd wish for him to be a bit younger, more room to develop, but the 27-year-old Josh Allen, not the quarterback, obviously, is quickly becoming one of the best pass rushers in the entire NFL. If you're not noticing, you're not paying attention. He was someone that it took a little bit to get going, for sure, but has certainly found his footing as one of the better pass rushers in the entire league. And surprise, surprise, it's coming in his free agent season in real life, which is kind of funny. Always seems to work that way, right? I wonder why. But I offered him a five-year contract. I don't think he's going to end up signing with us, but I figure we're not paying Montez Sweat. We're not paying Chase Young, obviously. They're not on the team anymore. Josh Allen could be at least one perfect replacement. And I almost wonder, is it worth it to just give him a huge contract and just say, hey, we need something off the edge and you're it. It's a lot of money, but he's also worth a lot of money. The Texans are going all out though, plus he wants to be in a warm weather state. As I can tell you here in Texas, it's tough to be a lot warmer than right here in Houston. It, it's so hot all the time, except for today actually. It's like 55, which I know isn't freezing or anything, Every time I say something like that, it's, well, I'm I'm here in Minnesota and it's negative 40 and I feel fine. I'm wearing shorts. Listen, compared to the 80 something that it was a few days ago, 55 feels like a blizzard. Maybe not that quite bad. I'm from the Northeast as well. So uh, anyway, we're offering Josh Allen. We're going to see if we can go toe to toe with the uh, Raiders and the Texans. And I feel like we probably can't and we didn't. He's headed to Houston, division rival of his former team, the Jacksonville Jaguars. I mean, Logan Thomas is down to a 70. Man, we have a bunch of holes at linebacker. KJ Henry's up to star dev. I don't really think that changes anything for me. We might want to go out and sign a linebacker or two in free agency just because I can't fill the entire team through the draft this year. We've got to get something out there. Levante David for a year, maybe. Willie Gay could be good, but he doesn't want to be here. Willie Gay would be interested, though, if we can get a mentor at the position. And I figure we need to sign more linebackers anyway. Why not sign a mentor? And then we can bring in Willie Gay because he'll be super interested. Yeah, man, AJ Klein definitely sucks. So we'll bring him in. I need something on the edge ideally but if we're going to draft one and we have kj henry yes it's not the biggest move or of need carl lawson though could be he was so sick with the Bengals before he signed that big deal with the jets and he just cannot stay healthy it's a uh, really unfortunate but he could be a nice player for us for you know a year or two okay so i think we're going to get everybody here except for chris boswell right now trying to solve my uh, kicker issue got levante david got aj klein great mentor Adam Troutman, in case we can't draft a tight end. Carl Lawson, of course. Like, these are not game-breaking players. I totally get that. But they're players that can help us. And Willie Gay is like, you need a mentor. I don't know if you're aware of this, Willie. We just signed AJ Klein. Wow, right? All right, now Willie Gay is interested. Now he's listening. So this is our time to strike. He's a good player. This is somebody we actually could potentially want to build around. And... I mean, he wants to be a commander so badly. We can actually probably alter his deal and still get him. I don't want another team to jump in the mix, but I also want to sign him for cheap. And other teams are in the mix. We're going to have to increase our deal a little bit. Well, we got Chris Boswell and Willie Gay. I know it's like not an overwhelming uh, free agent class, but I think it does help make the team significantly better. 
We have upgrades at every linebacker spot, with the exception, of course, of Jamin Davis, which is just two positions. I get that, but uh, not too bad. KJ Henry is going to start. I hope not, but he might. Carl Lawson's going to start, obviously. Uh, still could draft a corner, but we have three good ones. Quan Martin in the nickel. Emmanuel Forbes on the outside. Jalen Johnson, of course. I like safety. So the defense is pretty good. We just could use an edge rusher. And then offensively, I'm probably going to trade Charles Leno. We have to upgrade on him anyway. And Andrew Wiley at right tackle. It is time to at least look at other options. Nobody wants Charles Leno. You don't want that huge contract for an aging, not so great player? Color me shocked. There are a bunch of really good looking players in this class, especially those within the top 10 though. So we are undoubtedly gonna have some really tough decisions ahead. I like a bunch of the edge rushers. Oscar Gonzalez, we know is around one talent. I actually probably prefer Lorenzo Potts to him despite worse tackling. Um, I mean, Kari Reynolds looks pretty good. But that's kind of it in the middle of the first round. Both of the tight ends look fantastic. Demario Rice looks like an incredible linebacker. And then you worry about the quarterbacks. We have the second overall pick in the draft. It is imperative that we do not screw that up. Now, we have true talent grades on a number of players. I wanted to check out the quarterback. I like a round one talent. For, for a QB, that's really good. He can be... Anywhere in like the top 20 overall of the draft. And that usually means at least a 74 or 5 overall, which is real solid. Real solid, right? Now, I think we actually acc accidentally clicked the wrong one because this guy is the one that's accurate with an elite arm and pretty good movement skills as well. Overall, great accuracy. The middle linebacker, I was hoping for top five, but round one's great for him. I'm not going to draft him. It's just probably too high. But uh, definitely looks really good. And who was the last one? Kari Reynolds. Only a round two to three talent. Just do we want to invest the tight end position? Do we want to draft a quarterback here? It's a tough call. It, it really is a tough call. There goes Kalan Morris from USC. So these are basically our options. Do we take Max Stevenson here? He's supposed to go at number four to the Rams if we want to go quarterback. I did not get the true talent on the tight ends, but they both look very good. Just overall should be pretty great. A short route running, A deep route running, A catch in traffic, catching, spectacular catch. I'm trying to find medium route running. It's A to B. Like he's just going to be very good. And then the other tight end, Jimmy Lockhart from UF, he's supposed to be quite good as well. Also a very good athlete. A's across the board. It's tough to tell who's going to be better. I'd probably lean Lockhart, to be honest. Closely, but seems to be a bit better. I think he's supposed to go at 7. So maybe if we can trade down and still get the picks to take, like, Lorenzo Potts and Jimmy Lockhart, that could be nice. We could definitely end up missing out on these guys. The quarterback's going to be quite good. Is it a lost cause to keep going with Sam Howell, or should I just try to take a really good QB? And then there was the quarterback that's 20, which again, I never see. Did not really get a ton of info on him, other than he's got a great arm. He's a decent athlete. He's pretty accurate. C deep accuracy is not my favorite. We're going to look at him after the draft, but I just don't think I can draft him. I'm probably just going to avoid QB, maybe against my better judgment, to try to build around Sam Howell. You know, maybe a team like the Chargers wants to trade up. Okay, we are trading number two, a third. That one might be via the Chase Young trade. A fourth and then two sevens to get a one this year and next year from the Chargers and a second round pick number 38 from the Chargers as well. So we have traded down to the Chargers pick. And we're just going to reevaluate the board there. I'm okay if we miss out on some of these players. As a quarterback, we like is expected to go here, and he does. Um, and there goes to Mario Rice. I think at six, I feel a little bit better about drafting a tight end. We could still potentially move up or down. But I think 
I think I'm gonna try to move back up for an edge rusher. That's the current plan. We'll see if things change. But you know, I'm not saying he's a generational tight end, but you see A's across the board and you see really great athleticism. It's tough not to think that this is going to be a very good player and at a position of need. Jimmy Lockhart, welcome to the Commanders. It's our next Chris Cooley. 86 speed, 87 acceleration and agility. Overall, a good athlete, not amazing, but very good and the other ability should more than make up for it. So Oscar Gonzalez is expected to go at this pick, right, number 10. We know he's a round one guy. Is he better than the edge rusher I like? He's got A power moves, B finesse moves, A pursuit, A tackle, A awareness. That looks really good. Now, Lorenzo Potts is probably the other guy I consider. He's a year younger. B block shed, A pursuit. About the same level of athlete, but a finesse rusher with worse tackling. I don't know. Kind of a tough call. I feel like I've been burned on edge rushers so, so many times in Madden 24 with just normal development, which obviously you'd look to avoid if you can. Also some decent looking tackles that we could consider. I haven't really thought about that too much. And I've just been focusing on other aspects of the team, but that's definitely an option. I think taking Oscar Gonzalez is the smartest thing to do. Nah, maybe it's not. I don't know. There he goes at number 10. I was willing to let that happen. Raiders go with Josh Nelson from Auburn. And we have multiple picks at the very top of the second round. So I'm thinking we should try and trade those to move up to number 12. Two second round picks will not get it done. What about two twos and a three next year? Doesn't really move the needle a ton. It might have to be two second round picks, or three, excuse me. Haven't traded number 33, but maybe that's not a bad idea. So I want to trade, is, is the guy we want worth three top of the second round picks? That's the question. What if we just like went all in on our future and say, hey, we're going to be good by 2026. They're just not really super interested in that. Which I guess makes sense. It's a long time to wait. And do we even want to get rid of that pick? We have two first rounders next year. One of those is via the Chargers. What if I just traded the Chargers pick? How valuable is that? A little bit, but not a ton. I'm going to just bite the bullet. Three second rounders gets us number 12. I mean, we, we traded a lot we need this guy to be good. We know he's a round one talent. Actually, we don't. That was the other one. We don't know his, uh, he's a round one talent. We know he's 21. We know he has worse tackling than the other guy. He's a good athlete overall. Not amazing, but he's got A finesse moves. And I'm hoping for the best. We do get hidden development at least. 82 speed, but 89 acceleration. Of course, he's going to slide down to defensive end if we stick in a 4-3. I mean, there's something there. We'll see how good he ends up being. We need his finesse moves to be really high. And I don't think I'm going to be doing any more trading up. Going to be comfortable with what we have. We're going to move all the way down to the bottom of the second. And we got to capitalize on this pick as well. Now, this receiver... Okay, hold on. I'm seeing a lot of things. One, well, we'll get to this one first. Jason Townsend's 21 years old. I did not really look at receiver at all. He's, a, he's got great speed, great strength. His route running overall is okay, not great short. He's just a jump ball receiver, really. But his spectacular catch is not great. So that's, I guess, a bit concerning. And the other thing that just grabbed my attention is, oh yeah, this six foot nine receiver from USF. He's got A catch in traffic. He generally moves pretty well for somebody that's six nine. His route running, I don't know if it's great. It's bad medium. It's pretty good deep, and it's probably not going to be great short. I'd bet it's a C, but maybe it's better. His catching and release are bad, but he's 6'9", and I don't think I've drafted a 6'9 receiver the entire year. This is a new build into the game, and it just might be fun to do that. Although this guard, 
315. I thought about moving him to tackle for a second, but he's small. I saw a B run block and, he, and pass protector, and I go, okay, we got something here. We could draft him and then move Sam Cosme back to tackle. I guess that's an option. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to draft the 6'9 receiver because that's fun. Just because it's fun. That's it. Dave Brackett, welcome to the team. Does have hidden dev. 91 speed, 95 jumping. I mean, he's 6'9". Pretty absurdly big. We'll see if he ends up being anything. And if that guard is available with my next pick at the top of the third round, which he might not be, but if he is, I think I will draft him. And then... Maybe get creative with where we play our uh, our offensive lineman other than him. And do not see him available. Okay, who is this? Morris Christie? He's around three to four guy. 21 years old out of the U. Good linebacker school. Now, does he look as good as Jabari Stackhouse from TCU? They, they look very similar, honestly. They look like they could be the same player. Morris Christie... Has elite speed, even though he ran 4.63. A play rec as well. I'm very interested. Jabari Stackhouse is 23 years old, also has elite speed, but ran faster. Also looks good. I think we're getting around two to three talent here. Could be higher. I mean, I'll take a quick glance at some of these other guys. Deontay Childs looks to be about, you know, the same. Yeah, I think we're just going to take another linebacker here. Potential starter, Morris Christie from the U. Only normal dev, but it can go up at linebacker. He's got great speed and acceleration. Hoping, obviously, for hidden dev. Didn't get it, but I don't think that's a bad pick. I mean, Jabari Stackhouse is still available in the fourth. It's either this or Trey Down. Wouldn't be the worst idea to get depth. He also has normal development. Not a bad addition. And I will let the CPU handle the rest of the draft. I think that went pretty well. I know a lot of you are probably like, just get the quarterback. Get the QB, but I think we have something in Sam Howell. Maybe next year that turns out to be untrue. I want to give him another year to try. So I decided to build the rest of the team around him first. And I would say this went fairly well. Jimmy Lockhart is an insanely high 78 overall tight end. That's great. His catching and route running overall is pretty great. Medium and deep aren't amazing. Run blocking's pretty high, even if impact blocking is not. He's got every trait you could want uh, of a tight end. Seems to be pretty good after the catch, too. He's already the 20th ranked tight end in the top 8% of the league. So, that's a great get. Great get at number 6. Lorenzo Potts is a little bit more disappointing at just a 73 overall. I mean, block shedding's not bad. Finesse moves is fine. Not amazing. Pursuit's real nice. He's got a ton of traits as well. We'll see if his overall goes up at defensive end. I can see him going up to a 74. Not much more than that, probably. He looks good. Not great. That's pretty much the review on him. He does go up to a 74. Dave Brackett's only a 71, but he's a receiver three for me. I don't really need a ton out of him. Spectacular catch is quite good. Overall doesn't look too bad. Medium route running is terrible. Short route running ended up being very good. And a release is terrible, but for 6'9", I mean, we had to take the chance. Nice. Uh, Morris Christie's a 75. That's actually phenomenal to start right away. Stackhouse is a 72. And then we just got depth down the board. Now, I do want to check out these quarterbacks. The uh, top quarterback is going to end up being pretty good, I think. But these are what the final grades are. So Max Stevenson ends up being a 76 overall. Does have hidden dev. Accuracy is good. Has a cannon of an arm. Moves well. We would have been really happy with a selection like this. I just opted against the quarterback this year is pretty much what it came down to. For the sake of trading down and getting other players. He only has star dev. So it's good, but it's not like amazing. Justin Bullock is only a 72 overall with normal dev. Yeah, I just didn't really get the hype with him, honestly. Just didn't really seem all that good to me. Demario Rice is 75. Eric Cook is also a 78. Seems like we couldn't really have gone wrong with either of those guys. And then Oscar Gonzalez is 75, so that's round one talent. Really not too bad. Potts is, is close to that. Would have cost slightly more to move up, but we got a year younger. So, I don't know. You guys tell me what you would have done in that spot. Tackles seem okay. Yeah, the corners are always rated really high in these Madden drafts. 
overall, you know, I think we did pretty well. We actually get, ended up getting the joint highest rated player in the entire draft. The other tight end was right there. That's why I ended up drafting the tight end, obviously. Really good receiver that we obviously missed out on because we traded those second round picks. Max Stevenson's right up there. This safety ended up being better than I expected. But yeah, nothing too shocking here. I think we did pretty well in this draft. I mean, if we wanted Demario Rice at five, well, we got Morris Christie, who's the same overall outside linebacker in the third. So I feel like all in all, I really probably would not have done this draft any differently. Keep in mind, Sam Howell is up to a 76 overall and only 23 years old. He looks really good. Throw powers up to a 94. And with training camp, we're about to get him another upgrade point up to a 77. So I, I just feel like we made the right move. Diami Brown's in here. I didn't talk about him at all. I do like him as a player. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd say this team ends up looking pretty good. Yeah, I mean, he looks pretty tall at 6'9". <laughs> I know that's not exactly news. Should be able to go up and get it as well. I mean, he's absolutely massive. So he should be able to do this all day and has the speed to like consistently just beat people downfield as well. So we might have a good one with our six foot nine rookie receiver. He's only third on the depth chart, but there is not a player in the league tall enough to cover him. I mean, is there a six foot nine defensive player in the league right now? I don't think so. I don't think there's anyone even particularly close, to be honest. I could picture maybe a D end uh, being in the, in the six, seven range. Like, you know, I think Aiden Hutchinson's technically like 6'7", and uh, maybe DeForest Buckner's close-ish to that, but I, I don't think anyone's 6'8 or 6'9". Might have a number of offensive tackles that are in that range, but as far as defensive players go, I can't think of anybody that's even close to that. I mean, the last, you know, really, really tall defender I can kind of think of is Sean Oakman, who never even played a snap in the NFL, uh, to my memory. He was a beast at Baylor, though, was then falsely accused of some pretty nasty things, went to the CFL and then never got a shot in the NFL, if I, if I recall correctly. But uh, yeah, tough stuff. What about Jimmy Lockhart? Let's get a first look at him. Seems pretty good. One training camp rep, he's a beast. No one can keep up. What about Lorenzo Potts? We traded up to get him. We're going to need him to be pretty good. Oh, he's got the dance moves, that's for sure. Look at him go. We are never going to get to the quarterback at this rate. Get off the block, Lorenzo. All right, go back and get the multiplier, please. Get off the block again. We have, we have like five seconds. All right, we're going to get there actually pretty reasonably quickly. Should be an easy gold for him. You know, I kind of prefer the bull rushers uh, in this drill. It's just kind of easy to get past them because you can you know, flick the stick one direction and they just don't do anything sometimes. If you don't uh, time it up correctly or get there quickly or you've won too many in a row, they gotta just cut you back down to size. And because we missed a lot of the multipliers on that last one, we're gonna need a bunch here. We're gonna need all of them. But we are abusing the swim move right now and that's when they don't let you do it. So you try to go to the bull rush, but that's not really in his game. So a little bit frustrating. But sometimes you can just disengage and crush the quarterback, no problem. That should be gold, and it is, obviously. We already know that. I'd love a dev trade upgrade. Can it happen for a rookie with hidden dev? That, I don't know. But what about for a rookie without a hidden dev? We'll take Morris Christie in a chase and tackle. We'll dominate it. But if you've seen any of these rebuilds, if you've watched all of them religiously, you know I cannot do this one and talk at the same time. So I'll see you at the end. Okay, now we have Emmanuel Forbes, and they put this rookie six foot nine receiver in the slot. We're getting lucky they're not throwing any jump balls right now, because we wouldn't be able to cover any of them. He's six nine. Okay. Ooh, okay. That is a dev trait upgrade for Emmanuel Forbes. That actually ends up being huge. Now, who else do we want to use? Do we bring Quan Martin back out? I think I'm going to do Derek Forrest, actually. I think I might actually done him last year as well because he has normal dev. But now that we've already got a dev trade upgrade, I doubt they're going to do two in the same training camp. And I doubt I'm going to be able to cover this six foot nine receiver when I don't know the route in advance. So 
We'll do what we can, but Derek Forrest looks so tiny. And no blitzing! I'm not blitzing! The route is the shallowest cross I've ever seen. Okay. I can't... How am I supposed to cover that? I mean, he drops it, thankfully. Or doesn't get two feet in. Because they're, like, what? Size 30s. But... Goodness. We might be able to squeeze gold out of this. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough. No, it isn't. Never mind. This will be the team, though, for season number two. I like it. We have Logan Thomas at fullback. That's a little bit weird. But the team overall does look solid. I just kind of wonder what Levante David is doing at this point. I know I signed him, but I didn't really anticipate signing, or excuse me, drafting several linebackers, which it didn't end up being that many, but we got two, like, potential starters, and now, like, how do I not start Christie as a rookie and try to get him to win Defensive Rookie of the Year? So, I think... We just throw him in there at Mike Linebacker and say, get after it. And Levante David, you are a backup now. Emmanuel Forbes getting superstar dev is pretty nice. Hopefully he's able to have a big year and continue to develop. Our corners are now looking quite nice. They really are. Specialist-wise, I, I guess Brackett can be a slot receiver at 6'9". That'll be interesting. And then Jamin Davis and the rookie linebacker are going to be our sub-LBs. We need Potts to develop quickly. Lorenzo Potts, I need him to be a superstar. Although Lorenzo Potts has been a camp standout, I'm taking the power and finesse moves. His block shedding is already in a fine spot. I'll take the plus three to each. Block shedding would have been a plus five, which would have been nice. But I usually take the block shedding. I'm going to take the power and finesse moves. And we're going to get that ability developed very quickly, I think. And now we'll upgrade Run Stopper and Lorenzo Potts. Block Shedding would have been nice. Didn't end up happening for us. But it's already a 73. I think that's fine. Getting finesse, uh, finesse moves into the mid-80s almost before he's ever played a regular season snap in the NFL. I think that's going to be really big for us. And we know Jimmy Lockhart is at least a superstar as an ability slot has unlocked. So he is guaranteed, no matter what, at least superstar development. So again, that draft pick looks even better now. Lorenzo Potts, ready to ball out. We'll see if he can. Couple of quarterbacks at the top, including another smaller quarterback at six foot. Five nine receiver. This is kind of a small class. A little bit tiny from some of these guys. So they're really... Only it appears to be four total draftable quarterbacks and two of them within the top five. If we don't if we're not good this year, like I might consider a QB. But I probably would like to go somewhere else with my pick. The edge could still be a huge need for us. Hopefully that's the strength of the class and it's not. Wide receiver safety, right tackle. Right tackle, that's interesting. It seems like this is a class to need safety, I'll tell you that much. Well, we lost week one. Never liked to see that. Did we get a huge game out of the rookie edge rusher, though? Nope. Lorenzo Potts, not going to get another chance. His progression arc is over. One and six at the midseason mark. We have the second worst offense in the league and the third worst defense. No, point, I was reading passing yards per game. We have the worst defense. So... It's not great, obviously. It's actually about as bad as you can be. And a lot of players just don't want to be back. We have Levante David who wants to be back, but I think I just, I'm just going to trade him because we're doing so poorly. Now, why do Derek Forrest... Oh, scheme fit of the defense. Why does it even affect you? You play safety. I'm not going to say it's completely irrelevant, but it shouldn't be the most important thing to you. I don't know. Uh, I do want to extend him. He's a good player. We want to keep him around. And he's going to want more money to stay. Sam Cosme wants a mentor at right guard. We can make that happen. We'll just sign one. And then, yeah, I should definitely trade Levante David. Gabe Jackson, mentor. All right. Welcome to the Commanders. Dave Brackett is star dev. Jimmy Lockhart has superstar X Factor. That's huge. The right end. Oh, I just thought that was going to be the right end with superstar X Factor. That would have been crazy. 
They only got star, of course. And I think both of the linebackers only had normal. I'm a little bit surprised Steve Avila still is only a 75 overall. I know he's a rookie. He's played really well for the Rams. I'm really considering trading for Charles Cross, and I think I will. It's going to be Levante David and a 2025 third for Charles Cross and a handful of day three picks. That's a really great trade for us. It's a 23-year-old starting caliber left tackle. Charles Leno can now be traded. I don't know what we're going to get back for him. I still really need a right tackle. I don't like Andrew Wiley, but it's tough to trade for good tackles. Nobody wants Charles Leno. I can't necessarily blame them, but I, I probably am going to try to get a pick from somebody. Does anyone want Charles Leno? Him in a fourth, please give me a second. That'd be sweet. Charles Leno, two fours and a six, uh, gets us a second round pick from the Texans. It's not the best trade in the world for us, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Week 11, we are three and seven, not very good, but we do have a breakout receiver challenge to improve a dev trade. This could be huge. Is it Jahan Dotson? It is Jahan Dotson. He's just not gonna go off for 150 yards. I can just tell you that's not gonna happen, so don't even worry about all that because there's no chance. Now, I will say this other quarterback has just climbed all the way up draft boards, 51 spots, and looks like he could be okay. My three focus players are going to be three quarterbacks, five and 12. Not ideal, not ideal. Sam Howell, I mean, these aren't awful numbers. We're just not playing well, I guess. Brian Robinson cannot run behind this offensive line. Scary Terry still manages to go for over a thousand yards, 14 touchdowns as well. The rookie Dave Brackett had nine of them. Need to get the tight end more involved when he's a superstar X-Factor caliber player. Morris Christie had a ton of tackles, as did Jamin Davis. TFL is really all about Jonathan Allen, and we didn't really get a ton of pressure, especially not from the rookie Lorenzo Potts. A bunch of interceptions, though, overall. There are some encouraging signs here. It's going to be time for a playbook change. I just don't think we can do it in the commander's playbook we have an 85 overall team and we are playing like about the worst team in the league that cannot happen so we're going to make some adjustments we're going to bring in some more talent as always and we're going to start to win here in year three cowboys beat the jaguars 28 10 patrick mahomes gets another mvp and dave brackett actually wins offensive rookie of the year meaning we probably will have a superstar receiver as our third receiver i'm Pretty much going to guarantee he went up to Superstar Dev. Only one skill point upgrade, though, for him. And he does have abilities now. He is a Superstar Development player. His medium route running is still so bad. I need him to just get open. So badly. Do like Deep Threat. That can get medium sometimes and also develop that aspect of his game as well. Doesn't end up happening here. He's a 76 overall, which is not awful. It's not amazing. He had a solid rookie year. Ends up winning Offensive Rookie of the Year, obviously. Morris Christie, show me star. Yes. He didn't have it, right? I'm pretty sure he did not have it. And he wins Defensive Rookie of the Year. Okay, so he goes he goes up to star dev. He's going to go up one overall point as well. And maybe even another in the near future. He's very close to getting upgraded. Plus one speed is really nice. Gets him up to 88 speed. So he is a 78 overall rookie middle linebacker. That's great. Or I guess going into year two now. He's going to be basically a 79 overall after another practice or two. And then through training camp, that's another skill upgrade. So before a regular season game is played next year, he's probably going to be an 80 overall, which is really, really solid. We just need, oh, I don't know, a little bit more time and a different playbook, and we're going to be good. We're going to pick up the fifth year option on Charles Cross, who doesn't want to be here. Good thing it's not his choice. He just wants money, and he wants to be on a competitor. So we just have to start winning games, and he's going to want to be here for an extension. Jahan Dotson, we're going to pick up his fifth-year option as well. Probably not far away from an extension on him. Uh, Sam Cosme, we signed a mentor. He never changed. He still just is like, you got to sign a mentor. Uh, we did. He, he, he doesn't know it for some reason. Maybe that's why he needs to be mentored, because he's too stupid. Just kidding. Hook him horns. He's a legend. Uh, super intelligent guy. And uh, Derek Forrest will up that offer. He's good. We want to keep him around. He doesn't want to be around anymore. 
I don't want to even be any be around anymore. Too bad, your franchise tagged. It's a lot of money. Doesn't really matter. We have it. Ooh, Tressway. It's 35. We're going to get somebody else. Ooh. Oh, wow. A lot of interesting things. One, Chase Young is here. I mean, we we're supposed to rebuild the team without Chase Young, but Chase Young is back in free agency. And he apparently really wants to be here. I'm going to offer Chase Young an extension. The old, like, get him to another team, get value back for him, and then he comes back. Aroldis Chapman in baseball is the one that kind of jumps out to me. Yankees traded him to the Cubs for that Cubs World Series run back in 2016. They got Glaber Torres in return, and then Chapman signed back with the Yankees so that I could watch him uh, give up a walk-off home run to Jose Altuve in person at Minute Maid. Devastating. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna offer Chase Young. Don't need to revisit my PTSD. Jamal Adams is here. Wyatt Teller could be a big signing. And I could, I guess, move him to tackle. I need a right tackle. I, I'm going to convince myself that he can do it. Justin Jefferson's here, but it's just too much money. This is what it comes down to. Too much money. So we are going after Chase Young, Wyatt Teller, and hopefully we get both of them. And we did. I know some people are going to be upset about Chase Young, but it's something that could happen. Now, does Chase Young want to be in Washington for his career? I don't know, but... I can't not bring back a player that really wants to be on the team that's so good and and young and developable. It's just like too good of a fit with the team. I would say we're just going to stick with the quarterback we have in Sam Howell. These QBs are probably not worth drafting, which I'm fine with. Okay, round one, pick eight. Going to avoid all the quarterbacks. I really don't have any idea who I want to draft and I'm not even sure what positions I would target I feel like we've got a pretty talented team overall it's just about developing those guys up to this point so we have you know a tough decision I think we might just look to trade one or both of these picks like I like receiver the offensive line looks pretty good overall tight ends obviously quite good and then defensively, I guess we could go out and get like a big time linebacker that's better than Willie Gay. That could be a good option. Getting Chase Young back is huge. I know, I already know why. Or I already know that people are going to be annoyed at that. I don't really get why because like he's a free agent. We could re-sign him. And it didn't happen the year after we traded him, obviously. But he ends up being a free agent again. And we're able to jump on the opportunity. It could happen. Doesn't mean it will. But the possibility does exist. Dude, they definitely did something to draft classes. This is another 20-year-old player. I complained about this in a video at some point. I wonder if they went in and fixed it. I'm not saying that for sure happened. But I do think it's a possibility as well. Because I'm like, so many players are 20 and 21 that come out into the draft. Yet here, I never see anybody that's 20. And now I've seen it multiple times. It's only ever 21 is the youngest, but that's two 20-year-olds we've seen in this video alone. Sam Cosby in a first gets me Ronnie Stanley. I'm going to do it. That means Wyatt Teller can play his more natural guard spot, and tackle is now just a strength of us, of ours, because we have Ronnie Stanley and Charles Cross. Uh, Stanley, we're able to trade for him because he has one year left on his deal. We're going to extend him, of course. And uh, it's... Like, not great that I re-signed Sam Cosby and then just traded him, taking all that dead cap. But it's just, it's something that I felt like made sense given the, you know, the quality of the draft class overall. And uh, I, I might end up trading number 11 also. Just because I like where the team is, but we need a little bit more star power. And that's it. We're going to trade for Andre Sisko. Carl Lawson and a first gets us Andre Sisko, a third and a fourth. Andre Sisko gives us now the opportunity to trade the franchise tag, Derek Forrest, who just doesn't want to be here. Sisko is three overall points higher, a year younger, and under contract for three years. Just all the way better for us to have. And uh, Forrest could get something good in return. 
a superstar receiver that's 22 years old, only 73 overall. I definitely don't want O'Shea and Jimenez. How is he star dev? Derek Forrest, a two, a three, a four, and a five gets the commanders who maybe they should have drafted anyway. It's Christian Gonzalez. Welcome Gonzo to the team. We still have a second round pick. We'll actually draft somebody at that spot, but I figure it's just Quan Martin can be our fourth DB or fourth corner, and he can be like a move DB. Sometimes safety, sometimes corner, sometimes slot guy. And uh, I have Greg Short on my watch list. It's another safety. 21 years old with pretty great speed. Coverage should be good. He's a zone archetype. I'll look around, but I might just come back to Greg Short. Uh, this receiver looks so good. Chuck Edison looks so good. I just don't really need a fourth receiver. Let's do it. Greg Short should probably just trade this pick, but we're going to draft you anyway. He's got star or better development, 91 speed, decent athletic ratings. Why not? Greg Short ends up being a 73 overall. I mean, it's fine. He's not really going to do a whole lot of playing for us, I don't believe. And this draft was pretty bad. Pretty bad overall. Highest overall player was a 76. Now, there were quite a few 76 overalls. And this middle linebacker at the end of the third seems like great value. Only normal dev, but looks like a great player. 91 speed it would be super fun to use. It's just Troy Anderson, I guess is who that is. Lorenzo Potts has another strong camp. I'm going to do block shedding this time. That'll be plus five to block shedding. And we probably don't even have to worry about that for the rest of the rebuild now. His run stopping overall is going to be fairly good now. Maybe even like borderline really good. And I would guess block shedding is probably near an 80. Maybe a 77, something like that. 79, so it's even closer to 80 than I thought. 88 finesse moves. It's just his play rec that is so disgraceful. And put awareness, uh, that needs to go up as well. But the actual on-field ability, other than awareness and play rec, are very, very, very good. Renzo Potts going to have a good opportunity again. Hopefully this time he actually completes the breakout. We're in a different offensive and defensive playbook. I'm trying out Buffalo, which is generally really good for pressure. We did not do very well in the preseason. I don't know if that means we're not going to do well now in the regular season. As a safety is projected to go number one overall, he better be generational. And I would consider drafting him for sure. I, in the final years, I do like to trade all the way up if there's a really, really good player just because it's fun to draft good players. Uh, there's no point, like, setting the team up for a fake future at that point that we're not going to see in the video. So, if he's really, really, really good looking, we'll make a move. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it. This is the team. It looks really solid. We are an 89 overall. Our defense is pretty great. I like where our offense is. I mean, Emmanuel Forbes is up to superstar development, which is really nice. We brought in a bunch of new players. Forbes, I guess, can play in the slot bracket. I guess we'll leave as our slot receiver on offense. We could use a better third down running back. And I don't think it's going to be difficult to find one. Maybe in free agency, just pick up a receiving back and we'll be good to go. Let's sign Chris Brings off the Titans practice squad. He's okay, but he catches the ball really well. So it should be a good fit for us. Well, we lost again, 34-28. We just love to lose. It's our favorite thing to do, apparently. And Lorenzo Potts once again failed his big moment and is not going to be continuing his development trait arc again. And we are getting pretty used to that. We'll simulate to the midseason mark. Hopefully we're better than 1-0, or 0-1, excuse me. But uh, I, I just hope we're doing well. Let's just, really just cut it. Okay, three and four. Not what I was hoping for. We have the number 13 offense, the number 13 defense. We're about the number 13 team in the uh, in the league. And we don't have an easy schedule either. We're a better overall team than the Chiefs are, just completely. Yet we are just not playing even close to as well as the Chiefs are. And I don't know how to fix that yet. Ooh, Scary Terry does not want to be here. He wants to be in a different scheme. Well, what if I just gave you more money to shut that stupid mouth of yours, Terry? Is that okay? Yep. Jonathan Allen for three years. No brainer for him. Still very, very good. Jamin Davis for four years, I like. He can't commit right now. Why? Give me a reason. Not just like, eh, I don't know. 
Brian Robinson, I would do a three-year deal for him. He's approaching a 90 overall. He wants more money. Doesn't everybody? Ronnie Stanley, also here. He wants to be on a Super Bowl contending team, and that's not us right now. And then Sam Howell is here, and he is expensive. Well, he's the guy now, so we have to. There you go. Big extension for Sam Howell. I don't know what we're going to do about the rest of my free agent class, because we want all three of these guys to come back ideally, and we're not going to be able to do that at all. So next up is figuring out where we can save money and acting on that quickly. Sam Howell is not on a rookie deal anymore, which means he's expensive now, but he's not that expensive. Where can we save money? Ronnie Stanley. No, I can't do that. Andrew Wiley. What are you even doing here still? He's cut. Get him out of here. How do I still have Andrew Wiley? Well, we lost to the Chiefs, obviously. We just can't seem to win these games. Is where we currently seem to be. It's like, we can play with any team. We just can't beat them. And we, we can't play with the Bears, actually. We get crushed 31-13. What is our issue? We're the number one passing offense and the number 28 rushing offense. Our offensive line is good. We have a high overall-ish running back. Why are we not getting it done? And this safety does not look generational. He's got C zone coverage. How good can he be? Looks like a really good athlete, though. But, yeah, I, I, I go back to my how good can he be with C zone coverage. Still probably very good, but uh, I'm not super moved. We did not make the playoffs. We went 6-11. and 11. Our offense just sucks. Our defense wasn't so bad. Our offense is just terrible. And is it Sam Howell? I hope not. I just extended the guy. But I, it's not going well. We have no running game. It's like, it's incredible how poorly we are running the ball. I should have traded Brian Robinson. He is just not good for us. Jimmy Lockhart dominated nearly 1,000 yards, 13 touchdowns. He's nearly a 90 overall. Like, he's a beast. Jahan Dotson's putting up numbers, as is Dave Brackett. What a year. Scary Terry's like an afterthought at this point. And then defensively, Jamin Davis had 150 tackles, 10 for loss, three and a half sacks and a pick. That might be up there for defensive player of the year. Chase Young, 15 and a half sacks. I mean, our team's better. Just not good enough somehow. Does it really all come down to the quarterback? We're throwing the ball at an elite level. We just cannot run the ball at all. Or score, really. Chiefs win the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow wins MVP. Nothing really to report for the Commanders in yearly awards. Just frustrating. I feel like we built a really good team, and they just have not been successful at all up to this point. We're a 90 overall. We can't win even seven games. Definitely very disappointing. I don't know that we have to go back to the drawing board and just totally refigure out the entire team. Could be time for a playbook change again. We just have to do something to be more effective. And I don't think Sam Howell's the problem because we've done well with lower overall QBs before. And he's into the 80s. It's not too bad. Okay, 41 million in free agency here. That should be enough to bring these guys back. Obviously, the contracts change over time, so that's why we have more money. And we got rid of uh, some dead weight as well. Jamin Davis is still frustrating. You have to pay outside linebackers who are off-ball linebackers and you're 4-3 like they're edge rushers. But I just do want to keep Jamin Davis on the team. So I am going to offer him. He declines and opts to test free agency. Annoying. Ronnie Stanley should want to come back. He's also going to test free agency. Probably going to tag Ronnie Stanley. That leaves us with $15 million to bring back Jamin Davis in free agency. And that means Brian Robinson will walk. That's just what we have to let happen right now. All right, this is the free agent class. Robinson and Jamin Davis are here. I obviously want to bring back Jamin Davis. I talked about that already. He wants to be here. I don't know why he was playing coy. I just, just wanted to test free agency a little bit. Uh, I'll offer him more money. And we should be able to bring him back. Now, beyond Jamin Davis... 
Uh, it's looking ugly. We do bring back Jamin Davis. Don't really have a lot of money for anything else right now after the franchise tag of Ronnie Stanley, which was frustrating. We have to clear up uh, like some more money somehow, which we're going to be able to do. Just have to figure out where to do it. Willie Gay, maybe? Maybe. Interestingly enough, Demarcus McLeod does end up being a top five talent overall. Which, yeah, as I mentioned, is interesting. He's going to be a good player. His own coverage is not great. Is his man coverage great? His man coverage is an A, so that's what the deal is. Just really well round. He's probably just a corner that is playing safety, essentially. McLeod expected to go at six. Ridley expected to go at seven. Don't really need a receiver too badly, though. I wish I knew more about this running back, DeAndre Parker from OU. 5'10", 197. Is 23 years old already. Only has D juke move. Probably not worth drafting. If we want a running back, no generational one in this class as far as I can tell. So we'll probably just end up trading for one. Remember, no Brian Robinson. So we have to do something about running back. We do have a top 10 pick. Jamin Davis was re-signed, I want to say, right? So when you look at our team needs, it's running back. That's the big one. We could use depth at tight end. The offensive line is good. And then defensively, again, maybe trading Willie Gay to get something, but running back is the big need right now. How are the Dolphins negative 85 million in cap space? You can't make a trade with them because they have negative 85 million in available money. How is that possible? Give me Bijan. It's going to be two first round picks, one in 2026, one in 2028, a second this year as well, and a third this year as well for Bijan Robinson. We don't have a running game. Guess what? We just got one. Did we give up way too much? Yeah, probably. But will it matter? I'm trying to win. We just made a move to do that. We're up to a 91 overall. The Bijan get should be pretty big. Got a decent backup running back behind him as well. Uh, and a decent backup tight end too. Not amazing, right? Let's see what this draft class looked like. Demarcus McLeod was the highest overall player. There were 379 overall guys. Nobody has been 80 plus in this video though, I don't think. Which I feel like is somewhat rare. 78 man coverage playing up to a 79 for the safety Demarcus McLeod. I mean, overall, he doesn't look amazing. It's just like what, speed and acceleration and man coverage carrying the overall. He's like fine. I don't know. I don't know that he's anything special, but we'll probably just have superstar X Factor because that's cool. Okay, before we hop into training camp, what does my team look like? Do I need to go out and get anything done? You have Bijan. I really do like the look of the offense. I just need us to play better. That's that's pretty much it. Defensively, uh more pressure on the quarterback wouldn't be the worst thing. Lorenzo Potts, in theory, should be great. It's just play rec and awareness that are really hurting him right now. You boosted up that play rec by five. I think he, he goes up massively in overall. Still rocking out with Willie Gay. Thought he would develop a little bit more than he has right now. Could potentially trade one of my corners. Teams are calling about Quan Martin. Probably just not going to do that. And Bernie Merritt does have hidden dev. Probably star. He'll be our backup running back. This drill doesn't really matter too much with him. And we'll see if we can just get a quick gold, get in a, another skill point. Bijan's already 98. I feel like it doesn't really even matter for him. He's just too good already. So if our running game isn't good in 2026, I think it is now, it's never going to be good. Our offensive line is as good as it can be. And our running back is the highest overall running back in the entire league, Bijan Robinson. Hook him horns, of course. Hook him. And uh, my voice is struggling to say the word good, as you guys may have noticed. We're struggling a bit there. A lot of good, but it's all right. Dominating with the rookie, Bernie Merritt. Wow, Lorenzo Potts with another strong camp. I'm shocked. Well, block shedding. I don't know. We'll get a plus five to block shedding on him again. Uh, he is now insanely good at that. And he also had, uh, as we're 0-2 in the preseason again, of course, by the way. He also had... Uh, another upgrade, which got him up with the run stopper. It was already like 83 or 84. As we'll get Sam Howell to be an 80 overall improviser. 84 true overall. He's good. Just uh, play better. 
We are a 92 overall team. With the 92 offense and defense. Why are we so bad? Hopefully this is the year where that doesn't end up being the case. Lorenzo Potts ready to make an impact to go up to Superstar Dev eventually. I wonder if that's going to happen. It won't. He should be able to dominate at this point. He, But he won't. He won't. He won't. Maybe I should have upgraded power moves. That could have been a better use of funds there. I'll move him over to left end so he's not conflicting with Chase Young. He's got 87 block shed and 90 finesse moves. It is literally just play rec that refuses to get upgraded on him. It's massively dragging down his overall and his production, I think. It is brutal. Why do we have 30 running backs on the roster? I got to move some things around. We need more depth on defense. We're going to have a massive cut spree. It's going to be great. Unless you were the family of any of these players, in which case it's going to be a tough, tough, tough time. This is the team. We need to uh, win games. That's it. That's all I got for you. Midseason mark, we are 4-3. and three. The Eagles are 7-0 and oh, and the Giants are 5-1. and one. What is happening? The Cowboys are 3-4. and four. This is as bad as I've seen them play. We... We just can't do that well. Four and three is fine. We are a 93 overall team. 93 overall. Can we not win even one more game at the midseason mark? It's depressing. Why does this team suck so badly? It's inexplicable. It really is. And we are 11 and six. What happened that where we actually managed to turn it around and win some games? 11 and 6 is a more than respectable record. We're just kind of alternating wins and losses. You know, sometimes win two in a row, lose one, lose two in a row. But the second half of the season, we only lost two games and went on a five game win streak to end up making the playoffs. And we probably would have made the playoffs at 10 wins, maybe even at nine, but certainly at 10 wins. And this is how we did it. Sam Howell was top 10 in the league in passing yards through 29 touchdowns to only six interceptions. We have a running back. He has arrived. 1,300 plus yards, 4.8 per carry, 19 touchdowns for Bijan Robinson. He had an incredible season. And yeah, 99 overall certainly makes sense. Receiving, Scary Terry goes for near 1,200, also 11 touchdowns. Dave Brackett was right around those same numbers. Jahan Dotson crushed it. Jimmy Lockhart took a step back. We focus more on the receivers and less about the tight end, but he is a 92 overall. It's just 23 years old. Clearly very, very good as well. And then Morris Christie had plenty of tackles. 16 TFLs for Chase Young, 14 for Allen, 12 for Jerron Payne, who led the team in sacks. Didn't really get a ton of pressure, but our defense obviously was good enough that we ended up making the playoffs in a, quite a nice spot. We ended up having the number eight offense and the number 10 defense. And we'll face the 84 overall Bears in the wild card, who almost surely will knock us out of the playoffs. So we win. We win. The Eagles went 15 and 2. They have an 87 overall team. We have a 93 with a similar schedule. We won only 11 of those games. That's unfortunate. And I think we're going to go ahead and pop in here. Divisional round of the playoffs facing a heated division rival. And we are better than they are. They won way more games. I don't know how, but we are better. I know you can say, well, they have a better quarterback. Don't care. We are better. A lot of it does come down to that quarterback, right? But we should be able to at least stick with this team. And they went 15 games. Ugh, disgusting. But we have the lead right now. And we extend it to 21-10. Eagles trying to get back in at 21-17. 28-17 now in our favor. Just got to keep it up. Eagles knocking on the door. End up busting it down. But we score instantly on a 57-yard Bijan Robinson touchdown that might end up putting this game out of reach. Eagles not going down without a fight. But it's third and 15. And we are going to send the house at Jalen Hurts. We have a great pass rush. I signed James Houston in the offseason. Is he really playing over Lorenzo? Come on, man. He is. Why is Lorenzo Potts not playing over James Houston? I didn't notice that because I didn't think that would be, that would be a thing. 
He's not anywhere else either. It makes absolutely no sense. I have no idea why that would be a thing. He's starting at left end, so he's still playing. But if he's not a rush end, he's not making a huge impact like he could have otherwise. So that is actually pretty disappointing uh, for his development. Really, really is. Check down. Oh, everyone was open. There was not a player on that play who was not open. Everyone was open. And of course, Hertz is sacked instantly by Lorenzo Potts. Like... Why was he not playing? Why was it James Houston, dude? Doesn't make any sense. But I think enough time has passed where the Eagles really can't win here. I think they're just down by too much with, with too little time. An interception would be nice to end this thing. They get a quick score. I mean, I guess in a miracle scenario, they could get the onside kick, which has happened to me before. They've got that against me. And it actually was the Eagles as well in Falcons franchise. Wow, okay. I don't like the idea of, of what's happening here. But they would need a miracle. They would need the onside kick, and then they would need a prayer to be answered into the end zone, and they'd win. But uh, we're going to bring out the hands team. And uh, we're going to not have them get the onside kick on us. And there's John Dotson with the recovery. That's the game. Uh, and it's the Panthers in the NFC Championship. That's tough, because the Panthers are always really good in simulation as well. It's another team that's tough to beat. They're only an 85 overall. And you're like, oh, they're not going to stand a chance. They're going to stand a chance. Almost certainly. That's just how this goes. Really annoying. I get that there's a reason why they play the games. But, I mean, would you, ex would you expect an 85 overall team to beat a 75? I think you would. So, in theory, a 95 versus an 85 is about the same. But uh, yeah, there's a reason why they play the games. Upsets happen. I just hate when they happen against my team in simulation. I hate it. But we are up 14-3, already into the second half. 21-3 now. The Panthers actually are not standing a chance. We are just dominating them. It's 28-3, 28-10 is your final. And we are moving on to the Super Bowl. Pretty anticlimactic uh, NFC championship there. We do end up winning it all-ish in the NFC. And now we have to win it all in the whole league. Moving on to the Super Bowl. And uh, we'll see who we end up playing. Probably the Chiefs, Ravens, or... I don't know. One of, one of those two, probably. And it is the Chiefs. There you go. I mean, I didn't even have to check the playoff bracket to know it was going to be one of those two teams. It was Chiefs, Raiders. Interesting. Ravens actually got eliminated by the Texans in the wild card. And the Texans got beat by the Raiders. The Oh, man. The Chiefs barely beat the Bills by one point. And then beat the Raiders, who fired their general manager and head coach, Josh McDaniels, as I record this video. What a wild, wild twist. Happened in the middle of the night, essentially, at midnight. And we'll see if we can beat the Chiefs. Rasheed Rice up to Superstar X Factor. I've been noticing that's been happening more as we face the Chiefs deeper into these franchise rebuilds. And uh, we'll hope that it doesn't matter. And that we can just beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Kind of stop their dynasty a little bit. And, oh my goodness, how fitting is it that the, the name on that jersey of the guy they're showing is Snyder. Commanders fans getting flashbacks from owner Dan Snyder, of course no longer with the team. But, oh my goodness, what a fun way to start this. As we are down 21-14. Gotta make a push to get back in this game. Field goals are not really gonna help us against a great team like the Chiefs. Who are gonna score another touchdown. We need to uh, get a first down here. Do we th turn over the ball? We must have, right? How do they have the football? They just got it. I'm confused. I mean, I have no idea what happened. Tommy Townsend ends up punting us the football back. We're going to jump in here on offense. We've turned over the football three times, so clearly something happened. And uh, we'll see if we can mount some type of comeback here in the Super Bowl. Sam Howell has plenty of space. He ends up sliding down. We might go hurry up here. Less than four minutes to play. We want to move the football as quickly as we possibly can. And snapping the ball would be a good start to that. As uh, we're getting crazy with Sam Howell. Don't get caught from behind, Sam. All right. Chaos is happening. Ooh, nice lob to Bijan. Ends up being a bullet. Ends up being a broken tackle and another. Into the end zone. Touchdown. Bijan Robinson. Big score. Insane celebration. Bijan riding a bucking Bronco. Shame we're facing the Chiefs in the Super Bowl, not the Broncos. 
Two point conversion. We're gonna try to throw a slant here. And we should be able to get it. Ooh, ended up being really tight because the coverage was super weird. 28-25. Nice catch from Scary Terry. We're gonna need some type of stop on defense here. And that's back to back big plays for our defense as James Houston gets the quarterback. Why is he playing though? But great play, but get him out of here. I just don't, why is a 77 in that spot starting over an 84? It makes no sense. But we get the football back. I mean, James Houston made a big play. So I, I can't be too mad about it. And um, two minute drill, touchdown just gives us the win. We end the game on this drive. Let's do it. Uh, it's not a great start. We are not exactly in field goal range yet. And that is not what we wanted. I think we just might have drawn pass interference. Oh my goodness, I think we did. That's incredible. That is in absolutely incredible. Uh, I kind of thought he was running a corner route, which was the confusion on this. Because I'm like, oh my goodness, that's so wide open, it's insane. And that ended up not being the route. And the pass was way past him, and we just we ran right into the linebacker and got pass interference. I mean, it's, it's the luckiest thing that's probably ever happened. Imagine if that happened in the actual Super Bowl. I, it'd be absolutely insane. Because think about it, as Bijan gets a nice hole in there to run. Not only is that ball uncatchable, right? It's like, it wasn't really even pass interference. The, <laughs> the receiver just ran into the linebacker on a, on a ball that was, again, not close. It'd be a wild game-changing penalty. That'd be like the league wants the uh, commanders to win type of deal. Although we're not, we're not doing a lot with this spot. It's third and 10. I'm playing for the touchdown. And we're gonna throw to the tight end. Go up and get it. Lockhart, touchdown! Jimmy Lockhart with the exclamation point on a wild drive. He was our first big draft pick, number six overall. A tight end that high in the draft, and now he's showing you why. He's had a couple of big seasons. This one, not necessarily one of them, but a big catch to give us the lead in the Super Bowl. It really does not get a lot bigger than that. 17 seconds to keep the Chiefs out of the end zone. That's it. Don't let them into the end zone, and we're going home as champions. Quick throw, and the ball comes loose! Jamin Davis forces a fumble, but the Chiefs fall right back on it. Oh my goodness. And they have a superstar X-Factor tight end that is not Travis Kelsey. Stewart looked like he was staying in the block. I'm cool with them checking down to him. And oh my goodness. I don't know why I thought he was going to go back inside. I just gave him free real estate to get to the end zone. Thankfully, he goes out of bounds well before six seconds. Maybe the final snap of the game. Lob close to the end zone. Knock it down. Incomplete. And we're going to win the Super Bowl. Listen, it didn't have to be pretty. We got it done. Almost choked violently. Or some of you like to say chocked because you don't know that there's not a second C in there. No real reason to take a second shot at nobody that exists yet. Um, but... That's kind of a pet peeve of mine. I, I don't get how you guys think chalked is, or, or choked is spelled chalk. Now I'm doing it. Jesus. All right. Commander Super Bowl. B. John Robinson, Jalen Johnson added to the team. Emmanuel Forbes ends up being a superstar. Wouldn't know it from watching him so far in 2023. We'll see how things change over time. Andre Sisco got added to the team. Chase Young came back. What on offense? I mean, really just offensive line and Bijan Robinson. Other than that, players we drafted and developed in Sam Howell. Didn't draft him, but developed him, obviously. And that is what you want to see if you're a Commanders fan. Sam Howell hoisting that Lombardi trophy has the Commanders beat the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Somebody turned over the ball a lot. One pick for Sam Howell. A fumble for Sam Howell. And I think there was another turnover in there somewhere. I... It probably it was a receiver fumbling the ball, but we can't see that. Touchdowns for Jimmy Lockhart. The six foot nine Dave Brackett. Bijan Robinson had 77 yards receiving. 
And this tight end, Martin Stewart, went off with two touchdowns. But that's going to do it, guys. Hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed already. really helps me out. You like the videos, helps you out, hopefully. And I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.